Hi, I'm Cory Wong, and for this Thing for a Change video, I'm going to tell you a story about an abortion that happened in my class. A story about my class on abortion. No. I'm going to tell you about something that happened in one of my classes, and we were talking about abortion, and it was really strange because it ended up being one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had in all my years of teaching. So let me set it up. Right now, I'm teaching an Intro to Women's Studies course. It's been going very, very well, but it's different because I usually teach philosophy. In this particular situation, I had covered the chapter on health and reproductive rights, which is a big chapter. It's got a lot of issues, but the group presentation that happened that week, um, was about abortion. This wasn't the first time that I've covered abortion in my classes before. I've taught some basic intro to ethic classes, some feminist philosophy classes, and even a medical ethics class. And in those situations, the conversation, when it would turn to abortion, would focus on the moral and legal issues that were at stake. So we, you know, read uh, plenty of essays about the different practices, if a woman's life outweighs the rights, if there are any moral legal rights afforded to a fetus, whether birth becomes a significant marker in the timetable, a yada 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 on metaphors about violinists being attached to people. So I've covered the conversation about abortion before in my classes, but this one in particular was totally weird and it left me dumbfounded. I didn't know what to do. I'll tell you a little bit about how it all went down. They started talking about abortion and volunteered their own experiences as to why one student had an abortion and then when she got pregnant again, she didn't have another one. It was because she was so ashamed of having the first one that she didn't want to have a second one. So then she had a baby out of wedlock against her family's wishes and that brought on its own sense of shame. Another student had already volunteered the fact that he had previously been in situations where he had to have a couple of abortions too. That was interesting because now it's not just a woman's issue but we're getting a man's perspective. So within the group itself there were two personal stories that were given about abortion. Already I started getting nervous because sometimes women's studies classes get a bad reputation of being a form of group therapy. People start talking about their experiences. Yes, our experiences are important, but if our experiences become the only thing that we're talking about, then we might lose the bigger picture of the implications of why this is so important for us to be discussing. So I started worrying that that was going to be happening as the conversation went on and I didn't know what to say. Like, there wasn't a whole lot to pick up on except for the fact that Oh, wow, that's a lot for you to share right now. So when the conversation turned and opened up to the whole class, we struggled a lot. I struggled to try to make connections happen on the board, and I'm sitting there thinking, okay, what is going on? How can we do this? So there's an interesting contrast between this conversation and what has happened in my other classes when we've talked about this issue. For one, the book that we were reading didn't frame the discussion of abortion at all in terms of morality. Morality had just dropped out. We had historical accounts, we had personal accounts, pre-Roe v. Wade experiences that people had, the way that women were fighting for access to abortions in the 1830s, global ramifications of US policy on abortion. In all of the articles that we were reading in this women's studies book, we were not getting confronted with the moral problem. What came up were definitely the experiences, the uh, issues of access, and the dangers that are posed by having unsafe illegal abortions. As I'm sitting there struggling trying to figure out how are we going to pull some important threads out of this now presentation that just basically said, oh we've got some abortions that we've already had. This is where the interesting happened. I told my students I don't know what to do right now. I'm confused as to how to make this work. One of the students on the panel said, well, you know, this isn't exactly the most fun thing to talk about. It's like really unpleasant and people don't want to talk about abortion. And I thought, yes, that's true and that's interesting. And then what happened was that other students went around the room and kind of explained why it was difficult to talk. So one person says, you know, this is really hard as an issue to discuss because everybody's got their own experiences with it. And then that student went on to explain that someone who she was very close to had had multiple abortions and now was having a hard time actually conceiving children. Another person on the other side of the room says, yeah, well, this is really weird because like I have a friend who just had to go through this really recently and her situation was was totally different but you know it's like she had to do her own thing and then another person on the other side of the room there are multiple sides of this room chimes in and says why aren't we talking about adoption and all of this then finally someone shares her experience of having an abortion once and also having given up a child for adoption while also having a family it was totally strange I started freaking out thinking, oh no, this is just gonna be group therapy, we're all telling our experiences, but it was so much the case that my students wanted to talk about it that it, not too far in I realized I was gonna have to let go of this and like let the class run how it needed to run. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, what can we gain from this? 
we have heard so many different experiences. So many different experiences. They're all really, really different. These are experiences coming from people who are young, who are in relationships, who are married, who already have kids, who don't want to have kids, who've already had an abortion, whose family supports them getting an abortion, whose family doesn't support them having an abortion, people who are pressured to put their children up for adoption. Okay, what happens now? I decided to call out the point that no one ever brought up the issue of morality again. The point wasn't ever that this is bad, this is wrong, abortions, murder, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Whether or not they have those feelings, it was interesting to me that it wasn't relevant to the conversation as it was developing. What we were doing was talking about family pressures, financial pressures, other stresses of already having children, relationship considerations. Every person who shared a different experience, whether their own or someone that they knew, considered different factors. Regardless of how the morality also went into their own conversations, that wasn't relevant to the most important highlights that we were getting from their experiences. And then I decided to say the very fact that this class ran the way that it did might also be significant. Because what we did was not harp on the way that the political discourse is often crafted now in the public, where the focus is on the fetus's life and whether or not it's right to take that life. Everything else kind of falls away. So in our class, where morality of the question and the status of the fetus ended up falling out of the conversation so that we could focus more on the considerations of a whole rich experience that go into someone's decision, politically, the discourse is often focused on the opposite. The fetus itself and all the other stuff just gets thrown out the window. That seemed really important for me to recognize because as my students continued talking, the way that they talked about it was actually demonstrating something very valuable. And that was that a conversation about abortion cannot just hinge on the moral or legal rights of a particular fetus. They demonstrated how different every single situation is. And it was so hard for us to talk about it precisely because everybody's experience with this has been really different. So I sat there and I thought, this is amazing. Even though I resisted the way that that class was going, and I didn't want people to just fall into sharing their personal experiences about abortion, the significance of that ended up demonstrating itself. We couldn't just talk about this abstract notion of an abortion and an abstract decision and whether or not one should make it. Instead, it became very concrete, very particular, very specific to a number of different factors. And that conversation had to go that way. It was really important for it to be so personal. The way that the public representation of the debate about abortion is presented is often skewed in a way that makes it very difficult to really talk about abortion. So what happened with my students in the class was that they actually really talked about it. And we didn't come up with any solutions. We didn't say, now we're all pro-life, or now we're all pro-choice, or now we should ban abortion and go for adoption. Instead, what happened was something much more sophisticated and subtle than that, and I think more appropriate. So anyway, that's how abortion happened in my class. Thanks for watching the Think for a Change videos. I've got more coming on the way. And if you want some more material, check out my blog at coreywong.com. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. See ya.